you know, moving outside of the confines of poker a little bit, you did say earlier on that you mentioned the word legacy. I mean, Phil Ivey's now playing heads up at the minute, isn't he, against Jungle Man, and he once said that he had a legacy to win X amount of bracelets, times change, you know? Yeah. Is there anything that you want to be leaving this this part of our life, this earth, this whatever happens when we die, is there anything that you want to look back and say, I really have to nail this before I go? Uh, being a father and a husband, yeah. Or a uh, partner, whatever you call that. Um, I guess we'll call it husband and wife, because mm. I assume we're going to get married soon. Uh, if she'll have me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, being a, being a dad, I want to be, you know, and that's, that's also, I was thinking about this, like, I've thought about this hundreds of times. It's like, something shitty happened to me as a kid. Uh, you know, you weren't tight with your dad. Uh, my dad completely fucked me over in so many ways. You're stoked about being a dad. You're a great dad. And I'm going to be like a full-time all-in dad. So there is kind of like this, this balance that happens. Something bad happens and then this person's going to make up for it oftentimes. And then the next generation gets to have this great life that, who knows, maybe I'd be like this lazy, unmotivated, spoiled brat if I was just treated great as a kid. You know, I'm sure there's, there's things about me that would be better, but I'm going to be a good dad because of this. It's the dichotomy of pain and suffering, isn't it? You, as a father, you look at your children and you really don't want them to suffer. But there's a part of you that's like, oh man, they need to. Yeah, you <laughs> because if they, if they don't, yeah, if they haven't got no skin in the game, they're not going to grow. Yeah. So I'm not going to protect him from that kid who's about to bash his head in. Yeah. You know, e e even now, my, my wife's telling me that I'm, I've got an 18 month old and a 17 year old, and she's saying I'm far too protective over the, the 17 month old. Um, what makes a great dad? How are you, are you thinking about that? Yeah, I think uh, being present, just being around, um, being open-minded and not trying to uh, tell them how to live their life, you know? I want to give advice and always look out, but at the same time, I want, no matter what they end up wanting to be or who they end up becoming, I just want to support that and kind of be a guide, but not a person that's managing their life, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, be there be stable, be emotionally but solid. How important is communication in all this? Because it seems to be pretty integral, right? If we're gonna be building relationships and levering, leveraging those relationships in a good way and not a, not a fake way, we talked earlier on, didn't sure. we, about not, not liking fake and really thriving on authenticity. We're never taught communication in school. I mean, what was you like growing up as a communicator? And when did things change? Did you learn, read books? Well, how did it work out? Yeah, I think like one of my appeals to people is like oftentimes people will think I'm like fake at first because I'm pretty open, you know, I'm pretty open to say how I feel in that moment. And I do my best to just always be honest with people. And um, I think that was like therapy for me. A lot of the times in my life, like having that vulnerability was kind of me releasing a lot of hurt, a lot of bad stuff that happened to me. Um, and then in that sense, people grow to trust you because they're like, oh yeah, well this guy would share that with me. You know, I'm cool to share this with him kind of thing. Um, and it is real, uh, so the communication with me, even if I wasn't kind of taught uh, emotional intelligence or really taught how to communicate, I was just always kind of going into it like we're human beings, we're all dealing with stuff, nobody's really that special and that's, that's the one constant that I've learned. Like no matter who it is I'm hanging out with, uh, it might be this person that you, that you looked up to or uh, that you saw on TV and you thought was like this larger than life figure and then you shoot the breeze with them and you realize they're just dealing with the same shit we all are. So I'm just always in that, like, in that area of like, hey, if you want to share something with me, that's cool. I'll share something with you and we'll just lay it all on the table and move forward from there. Sounds like you're talking about the power of vulnerability and it's really interesting coming from someone who, you know, we could define you as like the uh, stereotypical uh, masculine male kind of yeah. big muscles, chiseled, jawed, good looking guy. He's never going to be vulnerable. but. It's, it's super powerful, right? Yeah, it is. And I, I've always been kind of the anti-bully because I was bullied, you know? So it's like, I did get big and muscular and mean and got in a lot of fights and stuff, but I, even though my area, I think, uh, since there's not a lot of information flying around there, there might be a lot of intolerance in the area. I was never phobic of anything or anyone. Like I was the exact opposite. If I saw somebody like being slightly racist or homophobic or whatever, I was really defensive of that right. because I could identify with that. I could identify by a person who was oppressed, you know? So, um, yeah, I've always kind of overcompensated to protect people. It's good that you, you put that back in check because uh, as someone who's been bullied for being Chinese when I was younger, all of a sudden you're 43 and you, you're still that little kid yeah. trying to protect yourself. 
just because someone's now trying to tell you what to do in terms of are you sure? You know, yeah. it's like it's really hard, isn't oh, it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you just snap on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how do you how do you measure your success then, Jason? You talked a little bit about money not being the ultimate. You know, you've, you've earned like 15 million or whatever on Hendema, but what, how do you measure success? Um, uh, feeling really comfortable in my own skin, uh, looking around and seeing people that I love taken care of, um, feeling life inside of me, you know, feeling like I'm almost like that childlike excitement for things. As long as I retain a little bit of that, I feel like I'm doing a good job. Uh, yeah, there, it's all between the ears, you know? It's like, there are things needed for uh, comforts and securities, and having money can do that. And, you know, I like good food, and I like nice things between the walls, and, you know, big windows and all that. So make enough to appreciate my view where I'm at, and uh, have good relationships with the people I value most, and, and constantly feel hungry, and I think that that's just it. I don't think there's much more than that. I'm Jason Kuhn, and I am High Stakes Poker.